So you're probably wondering what in the world is a keto tortilla fold over? <laughs> well, it's a super simple and easy quick keto recipe for you. It's also super affordable and you can have it on the table in less than 10 minutes. Now in this video, I'm going to show you four different ways that you can make these. One of them uses a little different technique than the other three, but they're all super delicious. I think you're really going to enjoy them. And I'm going to show you a breakfast version as well. If you like quick and easy keto meals, you're in the right place. I'm going to show you all about them right after this. So two of these keto tortilla fold overs are kind of my versions of some fast food sandwiches. And then one of them's a version of one of my favorite sandwiches. And then the other one's a breakfast version. So I know you came to see these. So let's get right into it. I'm going to show you what you need to put them all together right now. Now the first tortilla fold over we're going to make is a Philly cheesesteak. And let me know in the comments if you want to see a real keto Philly cheesesteak and see how I make the buns. But this is a quick and easy version. First thing you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 170. We're not going to cook it in there. It's just to keep them warm. So you're going to want to take a large skillet with some olive oil and then take another pan and either add olive oil or olive oil spray to it. For this recipe, I'm going to use these already ready to go sliced steaks. You could get your own ribeye sliced if you want, but these are super convenient. What I'm going to add to mine is mushrooms. I'm going to add bell pepper. I'm going to add onions. Now, if you don't like some of these things, you can leave them out. But for me, this is traditional cheese steak. So we're just going to start sauteing those vegetables in the pan. And I'm not going to put the mushrooms in yet. We're going to treat those just a little bit different. Then in the other pan, we'll start cooking these beautiful steaks. And as always, make sure you check the ingredients. The only ingredients in this is steak. Super clean. So to the mushrooms, I'm taking some Worcestershire sauce. I like to marinate these mushrooms in there. Is it traditional Philly? I don't know. Haven't been to Philly, but this is how I like to do them. Once your steak starts cooking, just push some of it to the side like that, and then use the rest of the pan to cook it, and then get these onions and peppers ready. I like to leave mine a little bit crispy. You can cook them all the way down to almost mush if you want to. Some people like them like that. I like a little bit of crunch and a little bit of bite, and. And there's Buddy. He is so loyal. He loves to follow me around and just hang out with me. Actually, he's just hoping I drop something. The next thing we're going to do is transfer the vegetables to a bowl when they're cooked the way that you like them. The mushrooms have just been marinating in that Worcestershire sauce. And you want to add them to a dry skillet. You don't want to add anything to it because we're going to cook all the water out of it. I'm actually going to rehydrate it again later and it'll absorb some of it and you're going to cook them down again. We're shredding down some provolone cheese. Now that's from my wife's. She does not like the cheese whiz, but I make my own cheese whiz. I like it that traditional style. So I've already got a batch of my homemade cheese whiz ready to go and I'll put a link to that recipe right up top here for you. Now you can't have tortilla fold overs without tortillas. And now you need to check these out. Make sure these are right for you. They're fine for me, but there's a couple different brands. This La Banderita, I don't like them at all. Now, they're really clean, extra virgin olive oil in there, no sucralose. It says keto certified, but that's up to you to decide. This is my favorite. This is the one from Aldi. I'll show you later in the video why I don't like the other ones. And I will tell you, if you don't have an Aldi near you, you need to go ahead and move. So this steak's cooking down pretty nicely. We're gonna make sure it's all done. I like to do mine well done in this application, but not a regular steak. Now work those mushrooms around a little bit once they have browned on one side. You want to leave them alone until that happens, but then you want to flip them all over so you can get that look on both sides. But it's really important to sear those mushrooms pretty good, get all the water out of there. That's just going to add to your flavor. And this is all about simple but great ingredients and making sure you develop all the layers of flavor you need to make this as delicious as possible, but still quick and easy. Those mushrooms are looking great. I'm gonna move on to the deglaze. So basically, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water in here. Now, I know we just cooked all the water out of it, but I think this step really helps to infuse the flavor, get all that Worcestershire nice and caramelized, but you gotta cook them down more until they're dry again. If you want to skip that, you can, but I really think it makes a huge difference. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and cook the tortilla. So just put it in that preheated pan. It's on about a medium heat, maybe medium low depending on your pan. These hex clads work really well, but you wanna flip it over. You just want a little bit of color on this because remember, we're gonna fold it. And some of them I like it a little bit crispier. We'll go ahead and add the cheese whiz right on there. And if you saw the fingernails, that's not me. That's my wife. I didn't get my nails done for this video or anything like that. If you're looking for that kind of channel, this ain't it. But you wanna make sure you spread that out really, really good all over the tortilla, all the way to the edges. Oh, <laughs> I could eat it just like that. But let's go ahead and add the steak in because because that completes the name. We got the cheese, we got the steak. So it's a cheese steak. And you can put as much or as little steak on there as you like. I like a ton of steak. So we're gonna have a ton of steak on ours, but if you don't like as much, then just do what works for you. Now it's time to go ahead and start putting on the mushrooms. And again, you can leave those off if you don't like them, but it really does add a complexity to the whole cheese steak. And if you cook them like that, it just works really, really good. And we're gonna go ahead and add on as many bell pepper and onion as you want. And that's why I left them a little crispy earlier because they're gonna cook just a little bit more. So just remember that when you do the initial cooking of the vegetables. Now we're gonna take it and get it ready to go onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet. And that's why you've got the 170 degree oven because you're gonna keep these warm while you're making your other two, if you're making three of them. If you're only making one, it's ready to go now. So we're gonna pop it in the oven until we get the other ones ready. Oh man, here's my favorite part. Once they're all ready, you just put one on a plate like that, and here comes the name. This is why you call it a keto fold over. You fold it over, and it is ready to eat. It's like a big taco, but filled with the Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely delicious. For this next fold over, we're gonna take a trip to McDonald's, except the McDonald's Big Mac has 44 grams of carbs, and this has about six, so it's a much better choice. 44 grams of carbs could ruin your entire week, and some people eat one or two of those a day. I don't know. Anyway, for this, you're gonna need some of the Big Mac onions, and I'll link my Big Mac sauce recipe video up top because you're gonna need the Big Mac sauce as well. But I go through and show you exactly what to do to make these Big Mac onions. But basically, you're just gonna take onions, take as much or as little as you're gonna use that you're gonna use in the next couple days. Just put them in a container, cover them with water and let them rehydrate. And this is what it should look like when it's finished. Like I told you, I do not like these tortillas, but it's what we had. We had some left over, so I'm definitely gonna use them. I don't throw anything away like that. If I don't like it, I just don't buy it again. Make sure you get the ones from Aldi. It's so much better. You're also gonna need some ground beef. I got this Wagyu ground beef from Walmart just to give it a try. And honestly, I'm not really a fan. I'm gonna defer back to Aldi again. But you're gonna take it Break it into three chunks, if that's how many you're making. And we are. We're making three of these Big Macs. So we're just gonna take them. I'll show you the technique that you're gonna use next. You're basically gonna take whatever means that you have to flatten them out. Now you can use kitchen tools if you want. I found it's best just to use your hands. And I know some people don't like that. Some people don't like if you put your hands on the food and all that stuff. But hey, I'm gonna tell you, I'm really cooking. I use my hands on a lot of things. A lot of times I don't, but I'm just showing you what I really do in my kitchen. If you don't like the touching your food with your own hands technique, then you can use something else to mash this meat out with. Just make sure you get it as close to the edge as possible. The Aldi meat really doesn't draw up a whole lot, but this stuff, it shrank a whole lot. So if you get that 8515 from Aldi, you don't really have to worry about it shrinking, but for the first time, I would try to go all the way to the edge until you know how whatever meat you're gonna use cooks. And go ahead and press them all out and get them all ready to go so you can cook them one after the other. Do this step before you do anything else. And like I said, if you don't wanna touch the meat, don't touch the meat. I'm gonna have to, because that's just how I do it in the kitchen. I'm not gonna get any fancy black gloves like they got on TikTok either. I like to be able to know what I'm doing, make sure I pound them out good enough, 
and then just add some salt and pepper on there. That's what McDonald's does to their Big Mac. That's all they use on the Big Macs. Now make sure your pan's preheated to a medium heat. We're just going to go right in there with that tortilla with the meat on top. We'll cook the tortilla side first and brown it just a little. Now in the meantime, I'm going to prep my other ingredients. I've got this lettuce and you can buy the pre-shredded lettuce if you like. I like to save a little money so I shred it myself. You're going to need my Big Mac sauce and I will link that video in the description. You're going to need these Big Mac onions and you're going to need some dill pickle chips. So this is traditional. Now, I don't like using American cheese very much because of the seed oils, but to get the authentic McDonald's taste, you got to do it. It's just two pieces. But that's about three grams of carbs, so you can substitute that if you want. So now that we've got all our ingredients, let's go ahead and put this together. So I flipped that over to start cooking the beef. So let's go over and check on the onions and I'll show you what they should look like once they're hydrated enough. So you can go in actually with a spoon and you'll get a little bit of that juice on the bottom, but just kind of stir them up and work it around to make sure all that liquid's absorbed. And the liquid's not a bad thing to put a little bit on there just for a little bit of extra flavor. I think you'll like it. So this one's ready and you see how much that Wagyu beef shrank? That's why I don't like it. I'm not buying that one again. I'll go ahead and put the cheese on and we'll stick it in the oven at 170 degrees just to keep it warm until we get the other two ready. So this next one's already going on and let me show you what the back should look like. Remember, you don't want it too crispy because we gotta still fold this over. So just a little bit of color on there like that will be perfect. So that one's done and in the oven and this is the last one. Oh man, that's some nice color. Now let me show you how to put together your Big Mac tortilla fold over. You're gonna need to get your Big Mac sauce dispenser and get it ready to go. Oh, you don't have one of those? Well, you're just gonna have to do what I do. So just take your knife or spoon or fork or whatever you got that you like to spread sauce with and throw some of that Big Mac sauce right on the top. I like about that much on mine. You could do a little more, but I think for all the flavors to come together, I'd use that. I'm gonna go on with the onions now. Just a little bit. Just enough for that flavor. These are pretty strong. And I will spare you putting them on my fingers. Nah, no I won't. There you go. You're gonna throw them on there just like that. That's how we used to do it at McDonald's back in the day when I worked there. You just stick your hands right in the thing and throw it on. I think now they use gloves, but they didn't back then. And I'm gonna add pickles onto it. You only get two at McDonald's. I'm going four on mine, because I just felt like I wanted extra. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just top it with that lettuce. And man, you're gonna love this. And then you can't have a tortilla fold over without folding it over. If you like quick and easy keto meals and you're not subscribed to my channel, just click the button right down there. It lit up for you just now. And you'll know anytime I upload a brand new video. Now this next tortilla fold over is kind of my version of the Chick-fil-A sandwich, just quick and easy. So we're gonna use that Chick-fil-A sauce. I will leave a link to that video right up there at the top and in the description so you can make this for yourself. It's actually the same video where I made the Big Mac sauce. I put them both together. So I think you're gonna like this one a lot. It's quick, it's super easy. And if you wanna see how I make the traditional Chick-fil-A sandwich, leave me a comment and let me know. Now this is the Chick-fil-A sauce that I made. So you're gonna need that first and foremost. And then the really good tortillas from Aldi. These are the best, they come out the best. And I'll show you later about the other one. You're gonna need some ground chicken as well. And we're gonna flavor that and make it taste just like the Chick-fil-A chicken. You're also gonna need some of those dill pickle chips again to make it just like the Chick-fil-A. You're gonna need pork bread crumbs or pork panko. And I'll leave a link to another video where I make the pork bread crumbs the easiest way I've found in case you wanna watch that. So to flavor it just like Chick-fil-A, I'm just gonna take some of that pickle juice and pour just a couple tablespoons right over the top of that ground chicken. And I know some people are like, oh man, you're losing your mind right now. But trust me, as soon as I get done with this, working that chicken in with all that pickle juice, I'm gonna go right over and wash my hands because, you know, chicken police, they're out there. 
Don't be a victim. I'm just going to dump in some salt and pepper and just give this a good mix again with my hands before we go in and put it right on top of these tortillas. Now again, I'm making three of these, so I'm going to split this into thirds and I'm going to spread it out all the way to the edge. The ground chicken is not going to shrink up as much as that Wagyu beef did. And if you use that Aldi 8515 beef, it won't shrink at all. But make sure you get at this all the way to the edge and then top it with some of these pork bread crumbs. When you cook it on the pan, that's just going to add to that crunch. So it's kind of like that crust that Chick-fil-A has on the outside of theirs. It's going to make it absolutely delicious. Make sure you put enough on there so that when you cook it, it develops like almost a crust. And then season it with some salt and pepper. Now we're going to spray this pan down with some of this olive oil spray. And I get this at Sam's Club. It's a really good one with extra virgin olive oil. Just make sure you get a nice spray on there. You really want it to be neutral. So you could use the olive oil or you could use avocado oil for that. And with every one of these recipes, make sure you go ahead and preheat that oven to 170 degrees. Once the back is browned on there like that, just flip it over. We're gonna cook this chicken and we're gonna sear that pork panko on there to make that crust. Now once that chicken is cooked and that crust has developed on the pork panko like that, you are good to go. If you like your Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich plain, then you don't have to put this sauce on, but I love Chick-fil-A sauce on mine. So I put just a layer of that on top, but you could use barbecue sauce, you could use mayonnaise or whatever you like to eat on your Chick-fil-A sandwich. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my pickles on there. And you're not gonna get this many pickles at Chick-fil-A, but when you come eat here, you're gonna get as many pickles as you want. And then we'll fold it over. Next up, we're gonna do the breakfast fold over it's a little different it's more like a burrito I guess but we're gonna use those tortillas just the same so of course you can't have breakfast without some awesome bacon this is the bacon from Aldi again I just think it works the best and now I think you're probably wondering taco sauce that's a little unusual and it is I didn't mean to get that I meant to grab the salsa but I got the wrong thing so I used it anyway we were camping so I didn't have a choice we're going to use some cheese. This is a white cheddar. You could use like a pepper jack or whatever you like on your breakfast burrito. Now we're going to use salt and pepper and I don't have Redmond's in the camper. I got the cheap stuff. And then of course we've got our tortillas. So we got the good kind and we got the bad kind. So I'm going to show you in just a minute why I don't like these at all. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're just going to take some bacon grease in a cast iron skillet. And this is how I like to cook my eggs at home, but especially when you're camping, there's just something about cooking them in that bacon grease, being outside. I don't know what it is, but it just makes everything better. So I'm just gonna scramble my eggs, pour them in there. You can cook them up however you like them. But to me, when you're building these breakfast burritos slash tortilla foldovers, scrambling the eggs is the easiest way Put them exactly where you want on the tortilla so that you can assemble it just the way that it needs to be. Now that the eggs are done, we'll go ahead and put these to the side with the bacon which I cooked in the microwave bacon griddle. I'll put a link to that in the description if you don't have one. It's the easiest way to do the bacon. We're going to cook up some breakfast sausage. I just like to get these little links. You can get them frozen and just leave them in there for a while until they get brown on each side and then flip it over because you really want to kind of caramelize the outside of those, get a nice brownness to them. So they have a crunch on the outside that just goes well with the bacon, kind of soft on the inside. This is what they should look like if you do them the right way. I like to cut them into pieces, and now it's time to assemble these breakfast foldovers. We'll just start with a layer of cheese, put as much or as little as you want on there, and then we'll throw on these other ingredients. I like to go on first with the bacon because, I mean, it's breakfast. That's the base of a great breakfast. And then put some eggs right on top of there. And if some of that bacon grease happens to fall on there, hey, I'm not going to say anything. Fine with me. And then we'll go on with the sausage. And then put your salsa on top. Hopefully you got salsa. If you bring the wrong thing like I did and you got taco sauce, use taco sauce. I mean. Would I rather have salsa? Yep, absolutely. But 
I didn't, so I had to make do with what I had, and it ended up fine. And just roll it up like this, just like a burrito, and I'm gonna go back outside and cook them up. This is exactly the reason I don't like those tortillas. They break too easy. Even with the keto fold over sometimes, if you're cooking them, they still break. So go with the Aldi version. So now back to the griddle. I'm gonna take my cast iron skillet and no, I didn't wipe it out. All those little crispy bits are gonna be awesome in there. But what I did do is put some bacon grease in there and get it nice and hot. Cause I'm just gonna put these little breakfast burritos in there just like that. I'm gonna cook them on both sides and you can do a little crispier on these if you want to because they're already rolled up. You don't have to fold them over. You just wanna get some nice color on there, a great bacon flavor on the outside and they're delicious. Now when you're done, this is what they should look like. So it's about time to eat them now. But all that breakfast goodness and you can have breakfast for dinner too. I'm not gonna tell anybody. We do it quite a bit. That's what it looks like on the inside. Oh man, these were delicious. Now for the last tortilla fold over, we're gonna make a deconstructed meatball sub. Now I use my marinara sauce for this. I'll link the recipe in the description and up above if you haven't seen it or if you wanna make it. So let's back up a little bit. Let me show you what you're gonna to need to put this together. Marinara sauce, either my marinara sauce or you could get a jar if you want, but I would definitely recommend making mine. With my recipe, you can make a ton of it and freeze it for later. You're gonna need some cheese, and I like to use that low moisture mozzarella because of that cheese pull. And it's traditional for an Italian meatball sub. I would definitely recommend it. Then you're gonna need some meat, and you're gonna season that with Italian seasoning. And this is the ground beef from Aldi. I just sprinkle a ton of that Italian seasoning on there. Really give it a meatball taste without having to go and make all the meatballs. It's a quickie version. It's not gonna be as good as my meatballs that I make, but it is fast. I mean, you can have this on the table in less than 10 minutes, as long as you get your sauce all ready. And I like to add a little crushed red pepper to mine because I like some spice. Now, the other people that I cook for, I always try to ask about that red pepper and how spicy you like it. I tend to get real heavy handed with my seasonings, as you can see, but I like a lot of spice. So now we're just gonna cook these up the exact same way. Make sure you cook the tortilla side first and get some nice color on that. And then once you get the color, we'll flip them over and cook that beef. And then once you're done, this is what it should look like. Go ahead and put your cheese on there, that low moisture mozzarella, and then we'll go on with all the other ingredients. We'll get a nice heaping helping of that marinara sauce on there. And make sure you put enough. This one should be a little bit messy if you do it right. And then of course, the fold over. That's an easy way to have a meatball sub in less than 10 minutes. If you like these quick and easy keto meals, you're gonna love these. I'm gonna put some videos right over there that I think you're gonna enjoy watching. Please share this with anybody you think might like it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.